Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. So you got a new HF radio and it doesn't have a tuner that's built in. And you want to get on the air and make some contacts. Stick around, I've got an antenna build for you. And stick around till the end and uh, we'll have some future videos that you might be interested in here on KK6USY Ham Radio and Adventure. All right, let's get started. Now this link dipole is good for any HF radio, but where it really shines for portable use is you don't need a tuner and it's pretty light. Now there's a bunch of videos out right now on the IC705, a really cool, cool QRP radio, and a lot of discussion about why ICOM didn't offer a built-in tuner. But this antenna would be great for almost any radio, FT-857, FT-897, IC-7000, IC-7100, and others. It's also great for something like an IC-7300, FT-991A, or a TS-480 SAT that do have built-in tuners. Now, when I first started making my own antennas, I tried to come up with something nice and heavy-duty center section, like this one. That you're looking at right now. The only problem, depending on what antenna, what the antenna would be hung from, it was on the heavy side and not great for a portable fiberglass mast. I tuned my antenna for 10, 20, and 40 meter bands. You should start by calculating the wire length for 10 meter and then 20 and then finally 40. There are online calculators or you can divide 468 by the frequency frequency, excuse me, you want to divide that in half and that will give you approximate size for each side of the dipole. Cut each side a little long, check it, and lengthen it or shorten it, whichever it needs. Just fold the ends over and tape it for now. You can use an antenna analyzer or an SWR meter. Or just your radio. Here's some examples of things I've used over the years. They all work. It's just how fast they work. You can work them sometimes is the only difference. They all get the antenna made. If your antenna is, is too low in the band, the wire is too long. If it's too high in the band, it's too short. But remember, fold, don't cut until you're done. Now, I'm not going to build this antenna on, on, this, on this video, but I will show you what I used to build it and what it looks like. Let's start with the parts. This is an eighth inch black textured ABS acrylic I got from Amazon, but you could use any strong lightweight type product. I've even used cutting boards. Now here's what I used to hold the antenna together and to connect the bands together. The black parts are uh, just two inch pieces of wire ties, that are a large wire tie that I cut just from scraps that I had left over. There, um, the ends, when I use those, these ends here, just plug together. Pretty compact. I usually uh, crimp them and then solder them also. This is what I use for this antenna. You can use any, any old wire that you have, something you have already. You don't have to go out and buy, buy a wire. I like the silicone jacketed wire. Um, I used this 20 gauge, I think is what this was, and it works really well. Easy to handle and pretty forgiving when you uh, do, as usual, get into a knot. I got the wire from Amazon also, if I didn't tell you that already. 
Now for this antenna, I decided to build my own ballon. I also got this material. Well, I got some, yeah, actually I got all this material from Amazon. It's a, uh, 140 is the size of the, of the toroid. And it's, a, or 174, one of the two. Um, what I did for this, the length of the wire, the coax, is I took a piece of wire that was about the same diameter, wrapped it around, left, left a little bit of extra, and then unwrapped it and measured it and then cut my coax accordingly. That worked pretty good. Now, if you, if you need information on this, I got my information from the Soda Beans website. Uh, they have a really good uh, pictorial and description of how to build this. I think it was 14 turns. You'll see it later built. Um, no use for me to try to perfect what they've already perfected. So go ahead and, and go to their, their uh, website and uh, check it out. So for this connection on here, I kind of cheated. I bought this and basically all I did was cut the cut the end of it off and kept the uh, the, the SO2 the you know the regular SO239 connection so I can run any piece of coax. Uh, at the end I've got it looped. I, I used a uh, a ring connector at the end, crimped it. And then I also put a connector so I can eventually, if I want to, I can add a, the 80 meter band also. To the end of this, I have some paracord, which is really lightweight paracord. It's like, I don't know, eighth inch, something like that. I got that off of Amazon also. Um, most of the time, I'm just gonna, depending on where I'm at, I'm just gonna hook these to a couple one gallon milk jugs, or I can stake them out, either way. Um, the, mug, the, the milk jugs work really well because they'll, you know, if the wind blows too hard, they'll, they'll blow over, you know, and, and if somebody trips on them, they're not stationary. So hopefully nobody does that, but uh, who knows. And at the end here, I'm going to show you a picture of this antenna all rolled up. It's nice and compact and light. That's the nice thing about this whole setup. Now, one thing I don't really like about link dipoles is that you have to raise and lower your mast usually to, or drop the pole over to change the bands. Um, that, and that's why I like my doublet that I use with my Elecraft KX2 that has a, a great little built-in tuner. I just change bands, push the button, and I talk. Pretty compact setup right there. Um, if you don't think doublets work, Watch the mini videos of uh, the HRCC, Ham Radio Crash Course, Mount Pacifico thing, and anybody sitting on the big, the big uh, rock was using this antenna to finish their, their, their contacts. It works really well, um, but you gotta have a tuner. You can have an internal or an external tuner, but it needs to be a good tuner, not, a, not what comes in your, um, your main, your, you know, your regular home radio with a three to one. It needs to be at least 10 to one. Okay, these are the little plastic pulleys. Uh, my battery stopped or something. I don't know what happened. We timed out. But um, the red part I put over the top of my, my uh, um, push-up pole, which I use a uh, spider beams 12 meter pole. Five, 12 meter spider beams, about 30 something feet. And, I, and this comes down to the, uh, the beginning of the third section, which gives me about 25, 28 feet total height in the middle there. And I just run a piece of uh, fishing line, some braided fishing line up through this. I already have a piece cut, it's perfect. It goes up and down and a lot easier than lifting the whole pole and the antenna up and down every time you want to chart, change bands. And uh, it makes it a little bit more usable. A few more things to set up, but it, it works well. Well, pretty much that's all the parts that I've used to build this antenna. And, uh, and if you don't want to build your own antenna, there's all kinds of vendors that make uh, pre-made antennas for sale. The Chameleon antennas, Soda Beams, uh, Pactenna. One antenna I did buy was the DX Commander. It's a very good antenna. Um, 
different type of an antenna. It's a vertical versus the dipole. It, uh, they have a different uh, angle of departure. So it'd be, it'd be nice, neat to try both of them out someday and see uh, which one did better at, in, in, uh, at longer and shorter distance contacts. Okay, what I, I told you to stick around, uh, future videos, uh, I'm going to do a video on my doublet antenna that I use for soda works with my KX2. And I also have a, a battery box that I built that, uh, actually two different battery boxes that I'd, I'd like to share with you and maybe show you the build on those also. One's a 30 amp hour and one is a nine amp hour. Um, one's a little more complex than the other, one's super easy. Thanks for watching the video. This is my uh, first post, um, so hopefully they'll get better. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave questions down below. Um, I'll try to answer anything I can, and if I can't, I'll try to find the answer for you. So until next time, KK6USY, Ham Radio and Adventures. Thank you.